What's up, party people? How are we doing? Let me do this thing here real quick. What? I don't want to customize my dashboard. Stop that, Facebook. Oh, I'm sharing the stream, sharing the stream. Soon we won't have to do that. Well, no, I don't know. I don't think that's true. Come on. Come on. Wonder where everyone's at tonight. Okay. How we doing? Trying to share this stream here. But my internet doesn't want to work down here. Got a lot of fun things in store tonight. We'll see if that ever pops up. And then we'll... No, oh, oh, did it go? Yes, MailWorks is live now. Let's go to that. And let's share that. Come on, Facebook. Give me some internet, internet. I don't know if I can just share my own stream. I think I can. Okay, say hi. Can you hear me? Anybody, can you hear the words coming out of my mouth? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, I can hear myself on here. All right. That gives me confidence that the microphone is working. We got, we got mail. Seriously, like we have mail to share, not just like chain mail, but like regular mail. Oh, so how's everyone's weekend? I'm just glad it's Friday. As, as a nurse, I don't typically work Monday through Friday, but with this job I am. And it's been interesting. Very, very interesting. Having to work like regular hours, you know? At least it's not night shift. Right? Like, stores aren't open on night shift. There's nowhere to eat. Night shift is terrible. But now I have to do all my errands after I get done with work. Right? Like, what is that? How do you people survive? I can't just wait until my day off to do them? It's nuts. We have four people in there. Do we have comments? Okay. Oh, hey, we have comments. Hi, Kara. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Devin. Yeah, you can hear me. You come to the realization that you should have taken wood shop and learned to make stuff out of resin and random objects using a lathe. Okay. As opposed to doing what you do now. I don't want to broadcast what you do now. So if you feel like sharing, go ahead. But, you know, I know what you do. So, but yeah, being a wood turner would be awesome. And making stuff out of resin, re, resin, make, make stuff out of resin. I'm not trying to make fun of anybody with a lisp, I just can't talk. So, all right, so we're working on a wine bottle. Oh, in addition to what you do now? Yeah, sure. Heck yeah. Lathes are expensive, and a quality one even more so, from what I understand. I would love to own one, one day. My uh, son just started watching Forged in Fire, and he's six, and uh, he's like, Daddy, we should make knives. I'm like, yes, yes, we should, son. You're jack of all trades and a master of none, but better than master of one. Yeah. I'm fairly capable at doing a lot of things. There are things I don't do. I don't mess with electric wires. But uh, other than that, nothing else is on off the table. So, so who wants who wants to see what we got in the mail? 
because I would love to share that with you. All right. First up. So if you don't know who Joshua Bracken is, he runs Bracken Mail. And he's an awesome mailer that uh, I've met through the Chainmail community. Been super supportive. Bought a lot of my stuff from Mailworks.com. And has, you know, in general been a very you know, caring, supportive friend throughout the last uh, two years of doing this. I think November 26th, we just surpassed the two-year mark. So I did a uh, Scottish Salter inlay with some thistles on it. And he liked it so much that he bought uh, some puzzles and then redid the design in actual chain mail. Now, my design was, of course, done on the computer made for uh, printing on products, right? But he... He took my design and he turned it into an actual chainmail inlay and then he framed it. And the frame is awesome. The frame says... Amy Burns, Sugar Pine Hand Milled in Cove Junction, Oregon. So the frame is from Oregon. See if we can get some good, like, you know, there's some live bits on there still, right? Got the back, got this cool little branch sticking up right there, right? And then that, of course, the inlay in the middle, that's awesome. I'm super stoked. This thing looks so cool in real life. I couldn't believe it. It's awesome. All right. What else did we get in the mail? All right. We'll, we'll save that for a second. We got... A microphone. Thanks to one of our good friends from college. Who's been a very good friend for a very long time. I don't want to mess with that too much. Yeah, whoa, whoa is right. He had a microphone, and uh, he sent it to me because he wasn't using it. I'm like, who has a microphone just laying around? Apparently, my friend does. Then he sent me something else too. I've uh, I've kind of Frankensteined it at the moment, but we have a webcam now, and it's not perfect. It did not come on this. It had an attachment to go up here by the the webcam built into the computer that wasn't quite working for me. And once we get streaming to uh, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube, right? I want to put this like down by my hands to start out until we can get an overhead camera, right? But this is this is great. It's it's better than that camera in some ways, well in many ways. Right? <sighs> so, I'm pretty excited about this week to be quite honest. This week has been a good good week I have uh, I have some stuff that I have still to do from last weekend that I completely neglected I didn't neglect to do it I was unable to get to it all week and if that particular person shows up tonight I will uh, apologize live on camera but all right we also have a we also have a wine bottle with which to test our our chain mail. Now I haven't done anything except the start of this row since last week, right? And I want to show you something. I said last week that that looks about how close, you know, uh, it should be to go around a wine bottle. So I didn't lengthen it any further. I just want to show you how close we got, right? We're like a ring or two off right there. Now we don't want it super tight, so we'll go a ring or two more. But I was I was fairly impressed with myself at how well I had eyeballed the diameter of a wine bottle. Anyway, 
How was everyone else's week? What have you guys been up to? I've been working. Taking care of uh, people. Some of them uh, are very difficult to take care of, and some of them are not. So let me show you what we're working on here. All right. You got this uh, European 4-in-1 chainmail weave going on here. And we're going to make it a little bit wider. I just tried to say wide and thick at the same time. Good times. Did everybody get their Christmas shopping done? I have not. I still have to figure out what to get from my... I think I bought one present so far. I still got to figure out what I'm going to get everybody. I'm not the best person to pick out a gift for someone, if I'm being quite honest about it. Come on. No, don't do that. What are you doing? Yeah, so there was, like I said, there was a, a mount for that camera that attached it to the computer. And it was not working for me. So I have, I had the tripod. And I was able to kind of connect it to the tripod, sort of. I'm going to work on that a little bit more, so maybe it's a little, uh, maybe it looks a little better uh, by the time I'm done. But I really just need it to hold the camera in place and for it to work, right? So it can focus, like, right there so that people can see what I'm doing. So I'm fairly happy with that at the moment. And then we'll have a camera on my pretty face. And then one day we will have an overhead camera. But we're going to get started doing uh, multicam streams as soon as possible. I still got to figure out a couple things to get it going. But, you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun, and hopefully it will. Uh, we will be able to continue to create content for my blog, my YouTube channel, and, you know, get people to go to mailworks.com that way and teach people how to make chain mail and show them, you know, how easy it is to really get started into, you know, the, the quintessential rabbit hole of uh, chain mail. And then we'll have more chain mailers in the world and we'll discover more weeds and we'll use more materials and it'll be loads of fun. At least that's how, you know, that's how I think this is going to go go about do things that's how i that's what i think the effect will be i don't know i don't know all right what else did uh happen this week had the kids christmas concert that was awesome. There was a... Uh, oh, man. Sorry. Sorry to neglect the audience here. Oh, man. Ugh. I need a trash bag. So, we had the Christmas concert on Thursday. 
And, you know, we had the, the usual run of, of booger pickers. Um, but we had a, a kid with a, a Naruto headband on in the third grade. And uh, my son, proud, proud dad moment here, um, was up on stage with one leg cocked to the side, full on adjusting his, his schnutz in front of the entire audience. I was, uh, I was laughing my ass off. Oh, just, you know, such, such a proud dad. So we had to have a little, <coughs> excuse me, we had to have a little talk about, you know, where to do adjustments like that. Cause it's not, it's not on stage, you know, for future reference, he'll go far. I was pretty much dying the whole time. All right. Let's move the camera back down. See, it's going to be nicer when we have more than one camera. We won't have to do the stop and adjust the camera movement. Because that's always, you know, excellent quality showmanship, you know, stopping to adjust the camera. But we work with what we've got. I have a uh, webcam Frankenstein's to a old, I think it's a cell phone tripod actually. And I got, uh, you know, use the webcam on the computer for... To start out, it's like it's like when I started chainmail. You know, I didn't have any supplies, or I didn't even have pliers. I was a fourteen-year-old kid living in Boise, Idaho, and I was able to scrounge some wire from my grandpa's backyard, and that's how I made my first coil. And then. I was looking for these. I was looking for these the other day, but I, I actually used them tonight. The first, the first wire I ever cut, like I used a pair of vice grips to attach it to a piece of rebar, and then hand wound it around the rebar and made rings. And these are the tin snips or the snips with which um, I cut this. Uh, like it's like 14 gauge lineman's wire. Okay, mm -hmm. these are horrendously dull. They were horrendously dull when they were given to me and yet somehow I managed to crimp through my first couple dozen rings and make a patch which I don't have anymore I have no idea where that patch is at it's probably um, lost to history but I thought it was very interesting that uh, I found those particular snips tonight so Pretty happy about that. They're from my grandpa, as are this, these pair of pliers. One of the first pairs of pliers I ever started working with. So, all right. Get you guys back down here. So, I'm thinking we can probably at least double this. Before we start having to worry about tops, bottoms, and what we're going to do for the leather straps and how we're going to decorate it, right? I think. About double. Of course, that's the guess, but we'll double it up and then... Probably close it up, put a bottom on it for the wine bottle, and then get everything else secured into place. So, I think that's a good uh, plan of action. It's always very rare whenever I uh, plan stuff out. I'm very much a fly by the seat of my pants kind of individual. You 
you know, whatever whatever happens, happens. Whatever I gotta go do, I I go do. And uh, certain people uh, do not particularly. They're not particularly fond of that uh, feature of mine. It has given them more than one headache. But for this, I think it'll work out for wrapping up a wine bottle just fine. I know some people go to great lengths in their prep work for chainmail pieces. And I have never been that enthusiastic about prep work. The, uh, the one job I had where uh, I think that really killed any enthusiasm I would ever have for prep work for doing something was uh, helping a buddy of mine paint cars. And there is a lot of work to prepping a car to get it painted. And of course, being the low man on the totem pole, I think I was like 16 at the time, I got to do the bulk of that prep work and it was not fun. You know, the life lesson here is, however, is that when I do plan stuff out, it usually works out really well. Much better than the fly by the seat of your pants method, but, you know, I still, uh, I still don't want to do it. I should do it more. Maybe it's my tragic flaw to never do prep work, I don't know. Or just simply a character flaw. Still throwing dry already. Too much talking, man. I'm gonna have to. I'm probably gonna have to get used to doing longer streams. But uh, you know, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to keep my voice going. Drinking water or tea instead of beer would probably be helpful. No, there's a thought. to go we got we got the framed chainmail inlay that I was very happy to receive frame is beautiful the inlay is beautiful it's a nice piece of artwork to um, add to my chainmail collection down here probably one of the nicer ones So I've got, you know, I've got some of my stuff from, yeah, some lemon water that would help instead of beer. So I've got some stuff from Mailworks down here. I don't have a lot. I want more. It's hard to sell chain mail themed stuff when, when all you do is turn around with uh, the money you make from it and buy yourself chain mail themed stuff. So I have I have a few pieces. I try not to buy too much, but I want more. 
And then I have all my chainmail stuff. And 99% of my stuff is stainless steel. So it's all gray. And while it's cool, you know, this inlay that Josh did is uh, quite colorful by contrast. So I'm quite happy. He says he's going to do the Irish flag design next. I might have to scrounge up some cash to find a way to buy that one from him too. That would be awesome. Now, you know, I could also go and make all these inlays myself, right? But he did such a nice job that I would rather support a fellow artist, you know. Plus, I already did them on the computer, and it's like, that was hard enough. It's not, it's very time-consuming making designs on the computer. So I'm, I'm, I don't really want to make them in person. What child? We're going to get a visit from the kid. What buddy? Okay. Stay off camera, please. What? Daddy, you're the biggest farter. I'm the biggest farter? Yeah, but right. Mama told me to say that. Okay. To oh, Mommy told you to say that to me? Okay. Thank you, child. I love you. What? Hawaii? Mm -mm. What? Thank you for bringing me a beer. What a good kid. All right. Go back upstairs. Love you. Good kids. Good kid. Only have one. All right. Now we've almost got one more row done here. I think that uh, it'll be easier to track comments too once this uh, this screen is up you know because right now I gotta have it facing downwards and it's can hardly see when anything pops up I do have one design that I got to finish for someone who requested it last weekend. And uh, it's done. I just have to upload it to the store. And I have not had a chance to do that since last week. That is how busy I've been. One of the, one of the nice things, like, despite the fact that I work, you know, Monday through Friday like everyone else now... One of the nice things is that I don't get up until 6. I usually, well, I used to have to get up into, uh, at 4.30, right, to start my day. And that ring is a little sixth. Let's see if we can fix this. So, we get going at 4.30. wouldn't uh i would start work at six right but now i don't get up until six and i don't, I don't really start work until about 8 45. first thing in the morning we have a meeting 
and it kind of drags on, and then you got to drive to your patient's house. And you go from patient's house to patient's house all day long. It's good. I like not uh, staying up until the crack of dawn. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I, I like not getting up at the crack of dawn. You know, it's a nice change. My favorite is, my favorite, however, is when uh, it's the weekend, like tomorrow morning, right? You know, I'm staying up. I'm having a couple beers tonight. Guess what time I'll be up tomorrow morning? Oh, about 6, maybe 5.30. If I'm real lucky, I'll be, uh, I'll be wide awake at 5 a.m. That'll be so much fun. Usually get a nap in later, but... Like, why can't, why can't I just sleep? Half the time, it's because my son crawls into bed with us somewhere in the middle of the night. And by 5.30, he's finally managed to kick me out of the bed. So I just get up at that point. Oh, no, don't do that. Huh, I was cutting on... Cutting on some... Uh, plastic tonight and I'm finding pieces of it it went shooting off all over the place so I want to find a way to incorporate this elf weave I've done I don't want to do too much elf weave or thick weaves because I want this to be fairly light. It is metal. It does have to hang off his uh, belt. And so, you know, stainless is the go-to for strength and lightness. As far as I'm concerned. And cheap, well, not cheap, but less expensive. It's not that much more expensive than titanium, but it's also what I have on hand. Okay. All right. One row completed. And I got this piece of elf weave here. And if we can find a way, you see that? Inexpensive, that's a good word for it. <coughs> me. At least that horrible, awful cough I had last weekend is pretty much gone. I'm just happy about that. But... I'd like to incorporate some elf weave into, I'd like, you know, like have a patch of E4-in-1, then a little strand of elf weave, and then go into more of 4 in for the top, you know, kind of as like a separator to delineate where the top of the, the bottle's going to be. I don't know. So, we'll figure that out. We'll get there. One of the things I know is that this, the edge of this is not going to match up with this European foreign one here, right? But it might in a bigger size. Like say. 16 gauge quarter inch. Or 16 gauge 5 sixteenths. Right? 
We'll find we'll find a ring size that works where they line up smoothly. One of them will work. One of the weaves will work. And yeah, and we'll make a nice little uh, top of the bottle delineation thing. We could just do the whole thing in four, in four and one, but I like to get a little fancy every now and then. And then we gotta figure out a way for him to like carry it, you know. Without it being cumbersome, without it uh, tearing at any of his costume. Make it a nice, comfortable, transportable water bottle, or a wine bottle wrap, rather, to make everyone at the Ren Fair jealous. Which, you know, I mean, that's all we really want at Ren Fairs, right? Is to make everyone else jealous of our costumes. No? <laughs> that's probably actually not why people go. I, I mean, half time I don't even dress up or anything. Um, <laughs> I just go. I go for the people watching and the food. Because they're fun. I remember the first Renaissance Festival I ever went to was uh, in Maryland. It was a Maryland Renaissance Festival, and if you ever get a chance to go, um, go. Your Loren Fair won't let you bring in anything that might have food or beverage in it. I don't think the one he's going to does either. So he might just take like an empty bottle in there or buy a bottle while he's there. That's all you want? Well, that and for everyone to compliment my costume and take your picture. That's exactly right. Because it's not a costume contest. But it is a costume contest. Kind of. Oh. Oh, what was I saying? Oh, Maryland Renaissance Festival. I think I've mentioned this before. When I was there, there was this really cool act, a guy named Johnny Blaze, I believe was his name. And uh, he was a sword swallower and a magician. Um, and he had a very good act. And he was very funny. And he made me laugh and laugh and laugh. Um, and unfortunately, he died a couple years ago. But... Even without him, the Maryland Renaissance Festival was still quite entertaining. So, we actually uh, might be moving out that way again. Towards the East Coast. I don't particularly want to... You work hard on your costumes? What kind of costume do you wear? Because I, I don't work hard on my costumes. I, If I wear one, it's, you know... A kilt, a leather vest, and maybe one day I'll add more. Maybe one day I'll even wear one of my chainmail shirts to the Renaissance Festival. So, the... Uh... There are uh, job opportunities out on uh, the coast that Renee might be um, looking into soon. So we might be heading out that way. I don't know. We don't know what's in our future, but uh, we will. Uh, we will figure it out.
I wouldn't mind going to the Maryland Renaissance Festival again. Elf, Viking, Gypsy Traveler, Barbarian Fairy. You have many. Do you just like have one for each weekend? Does your rent does your rent fair have themed weekends? I know ours does. Both uh, the two main Renaissance festivals that I spent a lot of time at. Um, Texas Renaissance Festival, um, which I did not. I'm sorry. I didn't spend as much time as I wanted there, but um, that was uh, one of the main ones. I've actually sold product at that one. Um, long, long time ago. And it wasn't like it wasn't my booth or anything. I was just providing stock for the booth. I sold it all in consignment. It didn't work out in the long run, but it was a fun experience. And then what's the the one up here is the Bristol Renaissance Festival. And they're both pretty good. Pretty much. And yes, Texas Renaissance Festival. Right on. I got to go to Sherwood a few years before I left. I think I was there twice. It was still, it was while it was still like brand new and being built up and everything. So there wasn't a lot there. But it was fun to go to and support, you know. The one thing that like st has always stood out in my mind that I never saw again at another Renaissance Festival um, was there was a store that sold honey. Um, and not just like a bottle of honey, like 400 different types of honey at the Maryland Renaissance Festival. And I remember walking in and seeing all these jars of uh, multicolored honey. From very, very dark to very, very light. And I was uh, I was stupefied just by the sheer variety, right, of honey that they had. And I haven't, I'm sure there's something similar at other Renaissance festivals or that the uh, particular vendor goes to other Ren fairs. But, um... Okay, so we get to the Friends of Fair Season Pass and go every weekend. Hell yeah. You live by Sherwood? Right on. That's the one you go to every weekend? Right on. I live right by Bristol. Like, I used to have to drive from San Antonio to uh, Texas Ren Fair and then, like, stay the night and stuff. But I live right by Bristol, so I can go to fair all day. And then come home and, you know, sleep in my bed. Which is a big improvement over driving four hours to get to the Renaissance Festival. Sarah, have you been to Larf? Larf? I got to go to that one too and stay at the Hauser Hotel once. Hauser Hotel. Live action roll Florida. Live action roll Foxtrot. Hey, Kara, let me ask you a question. Do you think that the sound has improved since we put in this microphone over the like last couple of streams you hung out on? You know, because... Obviously, the microphone on my computer is not as a uh, oh, Louisiana renter. I lived in Louisiana for, like, way too long, and uh, no one ever told me there was a renaissance fair there. That's funny. 
I probably would have liked Louisiana a lot more had I known that. But I got to Louisiana and then I got deployed and then I got back and there were two hurricanes, Katrina and Rita. Hey Josh, how you doing buddy? I was just talking about you a little bit ago. Ugh. So I was living in uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana, right outside of uh, Leesville. And Sleesville, we called it. And um, I, I got there. I deployed to Iraq for a year. I come back, and Katrina and Rita hit, like, back-to-back, -back, right? So, like, Katrina was um, not as bad for us because we're on, like, the western portion of the state, like, towards the middle western portion along the Texas border. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um... The, uh, when, uh, so Katrina was, wasn't as bad up there. When Rita came through, we were out, well, we were out of power for like 10 days or two weeks. I don't remember. It was a long time. And so that was my first exposure to Louisiana. Hey Barb, how you doing? And, um, uh, I was not, I was not impressed. So if it was a Renaissance festival that started in 2004, um, I was, I got there in 04, I got back in 05, and then I left a year later. So, it may not have even gone on while I was, uh, while I was there. I'm good. Thanks for asking. All right. Get a couple more rings on here. I'm not going too fast tonight. So 45, 46 minutes, only a row and a half. That's okay. I'm not planning on being done with this anytime soon. And I tell you what, like, I'm enjoying live streaming um, because. It has definitely kept me accountable with coming down here and working on actual chain mail projects as opposed to what I normally do, which is um, work on a new project and get to a point where either it's finished or I you know, have to set it aside for one reason or another and then start a new project where I do the same thing until you have what I have now where I have, you know, a backlog of 150 projects that I should have finished years ago, but didn't. Did Josh, did Josh split? Did he like come in, say hi, and then leave? Oh, I was just talking about you. Yes. Just talking about all good things, buddy. All good things. All right. Let's see here. So, if you're still on, oh, I just wanted to show you. Look what I got. Yeah, yeah. This thing is amazing, dude. Like, you guys don't understand. The colors on this are super brilliant, right? And, uh, it's... It looks way better in person than it does on camera. You waste the first hour and 45 minutes of your stream today staring a bishop's mantle the wrong way? Like, how, how was it the wrong way? Was it backwards, sideways, upside down? What were you doing that was wrong? Does I have a concept in my head of what a bishop's mantle is? Um... I don't know how you're going about doing it, but I've wanted to do one for a long time. But I've never, it's a project I've never delved into. There's a lot of stuff I haven't delved into. I want to do more. So hopefully over the course of the next year, as we stream every weekend for a little bit, 
we get lots of stuff done and we get uh, an opportunity to work on new projects. Hopefully. And then one day, after we've closed the last of our rings, we'll finally put in a new ring order. I did my math wrong and had to set it aside. I'm trying to do one with the spider web inlay in it. That's cool. Okay. That's that's the wrong ring. Yep. That sounds awesome. I definitely want to see that when it's finished. Oh, oh. There we are. got to order some more clear rings for the chain whale someone so cleverly dubbed it so we can finish that and get that hung up so I will I will stop and order rings for those and then I don't know what the next project we're gonna do is I gotta figure that out you know got plenty of stuff that I gotta get done plenty of rings that I've had sitting around for forever that uh, I don't necessarily want to get rid of but I definitely want to use them up so that I can order rings with uh, that have a purpose where it is all written down if you were here at the beginning of the stream you got an opportunity to hear me talk about how I hate prep work and so back in the day while I hated prep work I just ordered a bunch of random rings and have all these random rings laying around and uh, now I'm just trying to get rid of them you're going to do what I should have done to start and design the inlay and IGP for a go back to weaving it's for a buddy of mine in our fighting guild that's awesome dude you should totally do that. I hate doing things like that. Um, but, yeah. You know. You want it to look right. Is it just for decoration or is it going to be a quasi-armor piece? If you don't mind me asking. a co-worker her, her Wisconsin accent comes out all the time and she sounds like Bobby's mom from uh, from Bobby's world which is it was a cartoon back in the 90s um, and if you don't want know what it is don't you know you're very young <coughs> and I'm very old um, but yeah I feel like my my Wisconsin accent just came out don't you know Quasi armor piece, that's cool. I I posted about making a movie about chainmail the other day. Yesterday. Last night, maybe. And I swear that was one of the most uh, commented on posts I've had in quite a while. Right? Mm -hmm. And someone on there mentioned making a shield out of uh chainmail. He's got a little uh, Northala tribe group, I think it's called Northala something, and uh, I think he does little uh, little blacksmithing, little weapons making. He said, uh, "Hmm, he'd like to make a shield." I'm like, I don't know how well that would work out. It would be ridiculously heavy. But 
It'd be a cool, it'd definitely be a cool wall hanger. Alright, we got the barrel of monkeys going on right here. Try not to spill those too much. I think we're about halfway through this bag. Which was a which is a concern, right? Like we may never finish this wine bottle because we don't have enough rings. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I posted about making a movie about chainmail, and several people took it very, very seriously. And I was like, "Why not? Someone write a script. I'll find someone to loan us the camera." You know, I mean, the point, the point of the post was that what, what is available out there, right? Like the Queen's Gambit it's a, was a book. Now it's a movie, right? The entertainment content out there is, um, very, uh, effective in, uh, getting people, into hobbies and there's no reason why well and spending their money on uh, a certain um, certain hobby right and there's no reason why that can't also include chainmail so That is a horribly twisted ring. I wonder, yeah. Let's see if I can round it out. How good am I? Can this ring be saved? Probably not. Let's see here. It's a little sixth, but. That didn't work. We need a ring healer here. All right, that's good enough. Good enough for me. All right. All right. How would you get enough drama out of sitting at a table opening and closing rings? Uh, you get showing off finished pieces or even showing off use in combat. How would you incorporate the actual making while keeping it interesting? Like Forge of Fire is beating and banging and pyrotechnics. The chain mailer doesn't have that kind of visual drama. Not yet it doesn't. There are, there are very creative people within the chainmail community, and I'm a thousand percent certain we can create some drama about chainmail, right? Even if it's just like a parody. The, you know, wh where there's a will, there's a way. How would you do it? I don't know. I, you know, the thought just crossed my mind yesterday. But people were mentioning it, like a competition with, you know, how many rings can you assemble the fastest? And then judging it on quality and then doing strength tests on it and whatnot. Get the, you know, a bunch of different types of weaves and materials and see which one's the most, uh, what do you call it? Like resistant to penetration, which has been done before, right? But, you know, you can always add a bit of flair to it somehow. I saw, the hell was it, a commercial, and I didn't get the name of the TV show. I think it was on Hulu um, of a baseball going 200 miles an hour. Like, it was a baseball shot out of some type of cannon, 200 miles an hour, and it was just going through, like... 10 or 12 leather gloves, like baseball gloves, right? And it was just cannonballing through them. It was crazy, right? So, you know, maybe we'll shoot a bunch of chain mail out of a cannon. I don't know. No idea is off the table. I was in a speech class, and we had an assignment that was to uh, come up with uh, the, the next great achievement in pants 
And one of the important lessons from that was that there were a lot of really stupid ideas that came up, but we didn't throw any of them off the table, at least initially, right? Because the things that some of us thought were stupid ended up, you know, sounding really cool. Was it 2,000 miles an hour? Maybe see what chains will pull a tank or something. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, there's definitely a competition aspect to chain mail that could be. And it, it doesn't even have to be like multiple seasons of it, right? Just like one 45 minute episode of, uh, people doing randomly stupid shit that is relatively entertaining. I'm sure we can come up with something. You know, make a random internet video. Someone did a really good, uh, you know, they had the camera focused on, on her, uh, materials right and then she did the whole you know cover cover up the camera with the hand and it came back and it was this i think it was a christmas decoration if i remember correctly all right well i did that with a couple buddies of mine we made chain mail from bean bags and fired them from a spud gun demented armory makes mini chain mail boulders that he fires from a tabletop catapult nice yeah see see stuff like that people people will watch it we just gotta get it on camera that's the trick which is really you know my whole point right like there are 13,000 people in the biggest chain mail group on Facebook right that's like what a hundredth of a percent of the population I can do math right it's a tiny, infinitesimally small portion of the population. But, you know, like me when I was 14, I had no idea that you could even make this stuff by hand. I had no clue. I didn't know. So, you know, let's do stupid shit online for 45 minutes <laughs> or so and record it. grab people's attention if, if it needs violence i guess you can include needle nose plier slips i thought about that it's like what when the thought first crossed my mind i was like how would we make a video about chain mail? I was like what are we gonna do like stab ourselves with pliers over and over again like i don't even know how do we get more people interested oh i'm just saying that uh like doing what i'm doing um making video content in regards to chain mail and how to make it <coughs> um, is one aspect, right? I think we had, I think we did two rows tonight. What time is it? 10 o'clock? All right. Well, I tell you what. I'm going to continue to work on Frankenstein's monster of a webcam tomorrow. And hopefully I'll be able to figure out how to set up um, a multi-cam stream. Uh, from what I understand, it's not insanely difficult. Um, if you didn't get a chance to see it, Josh's, Josh's inlay of uh, my design came in and it's, it's, it's wonderful. I want all of them now. Okay, so, so, if you enjoyed this stream, go to mailworks.com, pick something out for yourself for Christmas. Today is the last day to get something uh, that I will assure arrives before Christmas. After tonight at, you know, in two hours, it's not going to get there before Christmas, right? I'm hoping. CSI chain mail. Yeah, there you go. It's like... I have a coffee cup covered in chainmail, right? And if you hit someone in the face with it, it's like, 
them having to identify what made the pattern on their face that crushed their skull. If if I do a multicam stream, uh, yeah, I'll let you know. I mean, it's just I'll, I'll get with you. Uh, let's get let's talk tomorrow offline. Well, online, but like not here, off screen. So yeah, CSI chainmail. And you club someone to death with a chainmail object, and they have trouble figuring out like what you beat them to death with. That would be fun. Don't be don't go out and beat someone to death with uh, your chainmail and then record it. Maybe do that, but also don't. All right. So if you enjoyed the stream, go to mailworks.com, and I will see you guys tomorrow night. Okay, we'll do more. We'll do more wine bottle wrapping. Right. Gotta gotta make a little little carry case for this. All right. You're using the Carappy integrated cam. I mean, dude, you got to start somewhere, man. I haven't even bought a webcam yet. That was gifted. That was that was a, a gift to me. I didn't even know that someone had a webcam out there. Oh, and a microphone. Did you? Were you here for that? I got gifted a microphone from a very good friend of mine and uh yeah anyway yeah talk to me tomorrow go to mailworks.com you guys have been great i will see you uh tomorrow night have a good night